In this video, I'm going to be building a sanding block that I designed. And the interesting feature of this one is that when you open the handles, it releases the mechanism that clamps the sandpaper down. And then when you close the handles again, it clamps the sandpaper in. This is a small project and it doesn't require a lot of material. I've got a piece of Balti Birch plywood, just a scrap and a block of walnut. Also a flat piece of sheet metal is needed. You can get this at the home center, as well as four two inch screws, a couple of quarter inch washers, and two five eighths inch screws to fasten the sheet metal in place. I'm gonna get started by cutting the pad for the sander, and that's from the half inch plywood. I got a piece left over that I'm gonna to cut to make the ends for the sander as well. These also need slots for the sandpaper to fit through and I'll lower the blade down to a half inch and make those cuts once again with my mini table saw sled. And they also need to be laid out very accurately for the holes that will act as the pivot points for the handles. And I'm doing that on my table saw with my recent addition, which is just a drywall screw driven through the insert plate, acting as a convenient marking gauge. I'll set the fence and make the scratches in both directions, and that will be the point where I can drill. With that done, I can glue the ends to the pad. I'm doing that with regular woodworking glue and clamping it up with a pair of my homemade clamps. I'm gonna set that aside to dry for about an hour. And in the meantime, I can start working on the handles. And that's what I'll be using the walnut for. And the first thing to do is to cut it into blocks that are the correct size. And then I can start making the cuts that will form it into the handle shape. In the meantime, the glue dried on the pad and I need to get those pivot holes drilled. And to do that, I'm gonna clamp the handles in place, tight down on the pad, and that way I can drill through the ends and into the handles and everything will be lined up perfectly. With the holes drilled, I can take the handles out again and these are a couple of relief cuts that I need to make on the bottom of the handles so that it's just the very edge that presses down on the metal plate. There are a couple of edges that I need to round over and I'm going to do that with a sharp hand plane. I'll be able to fine tune this further after it goes in the sanding block. Last part to cut out is the sheet metal plate that clamps the uh, sandpaper in place. And this is just straight cuts and then it needs two holes in the middle that will fasten it down to the pad. Then I can get the sheet metal fastened with the washers underneath and drive in the two 5 8 inch screws. Quick check on the other side to make sure that the tips of the screws aren't poking through. They shouldn't be. But if they are, all you need to do is file them down. And then I can put the handles in place and I'm going to be using two 1 8 inch drill bits, the shank of the drill bits that is, in the ends to act as the hinge. And that way I'll be able to check to see if I've got enough clearance in that uh, part that I rounded over and make any adjustments that I need to until it works properly. I did the same for the other handle and then drove in the screws. I needed to come up with a simple way to open and close the handles and that's what these holes are for. I'd be able to get my thumbs in there and pry the handles apart. And 
And then kind of another problem with the handles when they close is sometimes they're not exactly lined up on the top. So I had the idea of actually making discs that fit into these holes. I glue one in one side and one in the other. And that way when the handles close, those discs will keep the handles in line. In hindsight, this is not the best idea because it means that you have to close both sides of the handle at the same time, you know, synchronized. But then I thought, how often will I be changing the paper in here? Not very often. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. And then with that done, I can finish the shaping on the handles. I'm going to round over the corners and make everything nice and smooth and easy to hold on to. This sander uses a quarter of a standard sheet of sandpaper and the best way to get it ready to put in the sander is to pre-bend it using a piece of plywood that's the same size as the base of the sander and then slide it in from the end. And then once it's loaded up we can try it out. <laughs> okay well as you can see the paper came out which was uh, kind of unexpected. Before this I built a prototype and that's what you're watching me using here and the difference with this one is it's actually wider. I oriented the sandpaper sideways to get a more square pad and what that does that's important here is it makes that steel plate wider and easier to bend down and easier to clamp down on the sandpaper. And in the narrow one that I just made that plate is simply too stiff. It takes too much force to bend it down. So to fix that, I'm going to swap it out for layers of thinner aluminum flashing. This is stuff you can get at the home center in the roofing section. And I'm going with three layers, which is actually slightly thicker than the steel I had. And when I tried it out, it works great. It has a really good grip on the paper. Because I had some problems during the build, I didn't make plans for this. I'll need to spend a little bit more time refining the design and then I'll put the plans together for it. But in the meantime, there are lots of other plans for lots of other projects on my website. And there's a link in the description that'll take you right there. You can get the plans for a project immediately and start right away. And if you're a longtime viewer, you'll know that a lot of the tools that I use in my shop are actually homemade. And the plans for some of those are available.